Hmm, you know what? Let's see. Let's see if I can uh, fit a bit of story time in here. So, uh, if you'll remember last time, uh, well, not last time, uh, actually, no, last Mario vs. Donkey Kong stream, uh, I got fed up with the game and decided to play AI Dungeon. Now, I still haven't made a uh, an account with AI Dungeon because I don't know how much I'm going to get out of it overall. You know, it's not something I feel like I'm going to frequently stream. I might change my mind on this later, but yeah, for the time being, uh, I probably won't. But that being said, I did dabble in AI Dungeon, and I think it's actually really fun, and I don't feel like I really showed off AI Dungeon as well as I could have uh, when I streamed it. So, to make up for that, let me just... Uh, oh, yeah, perfect. So to make up for that... Uh, I'm not going to capture that, I don't think. I'm not going to capture the mouse. Oh, no, that's... Oh, it's not giving me a choice, so whatever, it's fine. So, uh, luckily for me, uh, I actually saved one of my earlier uh, adventures. I copy-pasted it into a Word document. And not too soon, because it doesn't exist in AI Dungeon anymore, since, you know, I didn't have an account, it didn't get saved. But it's here, in my memories. And also this Word document that I'm not going to show, because I don't want to spoil it. Don't want to spoil what happens in the story of Big King Darkman. <clears throat> you are Darkman, a wizard living in the kingdom of Larian. Larian again. Mario's uh, off killing a bandit somewhere, I guess. You have a staff and a spell book. You finish your long journey and finally arrive at the ruin you've been looking for. You have come here searching for a mystical spellbook of great power called the Book of Essence. You look around and see a lot of footprints. These must be cultist footprints, you think. The ruined fortress ahead of you is long abandoned and its staircases are in complete disrepair, but you press on nevertheless. You create stairs with magic. You put your hand forward and concentrate on creating stairs. You concentrate for quite a while, and after a few minutes, the staircases appear. They are quite steep, and end abruptly at a single door. You magically kick open the door. You turn to the door, and kick it open with your foot. You walk inside, followed by your ghoul. The ruined fortress is completely empty, except for a few crumbling statues and a few dirty cobwebs. You aren't sure what to do next. Your ghoul points at the statues. Thanks, ghoul. You say, Hey, ghoul, what's the statue do? It guards the inner sanctum, he says. Well, let's get it, you say. You order your ghoul to move out and attack. Darkman's ghoul, Frank, punches the statue so hard, it flies out of the fortress. He punches it again and again, breaking it into small pieces. Darkman's ghoul, Frank, walks over to you. I'm so glad it very quickly picked up on me calling the ghoul Frank. So, what's next? he asks. You say, let's enter the inner sanctum and look for the Book of Essence. You enter the inner sanctum and begin searching for the book. You search everywhere, under the throne, behind the throne, under the rug. You look everywhere. You never find it. No book. You say, Frank. Do you think somebody already took the book? Maybe. Let's go back to the village and get some reinforcements to check for it. You walk outside and Frank follows you. You make your way back to the village of humble homes. You say, All right, nerds, it's Darkman. Bring me the Book of Essence or I will send this village of humble homes to the void. One by one, nerds appear and begin bringing books to you. You look through them all and eventually find the book you are looking for. I think I found it. Where? Frank asks. In the Emperor's throne room? Just uh, ignore how, you know, the nerds were completely willing to comply, but whatever. 
Nice. You begin reading the book. It's very interesting. You learn every spell from the book. You take the book and begin reading the spell one by one. The singular spell. So, what are you doing? Frank asks. I'm going to learn every spell in this book. Really? Sure, why not? It's my life, after all. After finishing the spell, you can feel a slight change in yourself. You begin to get a very keen sense of intuition about things. You smite a nearby tree to test new powers. You smite the tree and watch as it falls down. Ha ha! I found it! My powers are getting stronger! I can feel it! You say. Frank begins laughing uncontrollably. You high-five Frank. Yeah, yeah, I know. You begin to walk to the village, followed by Frank. You say, I've learned all the spells from the Book of Essence. Bring me the king so I can take his job. Several knights appear and bow to you. I have come to take the king's place, sir. As you wish, my lord, says the bowing low. Or they say bowing low, pardon me. You march to the castle. You march to the castle and see it in flames. Who's in there? You ask one of the knights. The royal family. You shake your head and continue walking towards the castle. You put out the fire with amazing water magic. You concentrate and create water out of thin air. The fire goes out, much to the joy of the crowd. Oh my god! A nerd cries out. You say, I put out the great blaze, something your king could never do. Please bring him out here right now. Several hours later, the crowd begins to thin, and the knights begin to leave. The, the king appears on a stretcher. You notice that his face is severely burnt. He is heavily sedated. <laughs> you grab the crown off his head while he goes by. Ha! Huh, found it, you say. The knights look at you confused. They didn't see the king enter, so they think someone else must have grabbed the crown. That's not important. You go to the throne room and sit in the throne. You walk to the throne room and sit down. You feel somewhat different now that you are in charge. It's kind of nice. I am now the I am the king no longer. I am your new ruler. You say, "Yeah, so king isn't a good enough rank. Big king seems to be a much better title. I am Big King Darkman now." Big King, the first nerd says. Yes, that's the one. You look around and feel a new sense of power. This is your kingdom now, and you are your own master. You say, I couldn't have done this without my ghoul Frank. Thank you so much, Frank. As one big king, I proclaim you as another big king. Frank looks around nervously and begins nodding. Thank you, my lord. You say, no, no, no more, my lord. We are equals. And then just, we are equals again. Don't know why it repeated. Frank looks around and nods. He begins to relax. Yes, we are equals. You look down at your book of spells. You begin leafing through it. You say, you know, Frank, I've been thinking... Since we're both big kings, perhaps we should be bound by marriage. Frank looks confused. My lord. I mean, it's not as weird as it might seem. I mean, we did unite the kingdom. It would be a good symbol, binding us together. Frank looks around nervously and begins nodding. My lord. Call me Big King, call me Lord, call me King, call me Master, call me Master, whatever. You say, answer me however you may. If you'd prefer to be just friends, we can do that. A kingdom can be ruled by two unmarried Big Kings. Oh. Frank looks around and nervously begins nodding. My Lord. Not as it weirds as it seems. Oh. You dejectedly continue leafing through the Book of Spells. Hmm, nothing here about banishing demons. Wonder where that can be found, you mutter your to yourself. Suddenly, Frank grabs your shoulder. Hey, I know. Let's go ask Lord Rick. 
You agree. You look up to see Frank eagerly waiting for your answer. He seems like a pretty level-headed guy, unlike most of the people you've met. Okay, let's go ask him, you agree. You teleport directly to Lord Rick. You enter the Great Hall and see Lord Rick standing in the middle of it, a big map of aftermath spread out on the table in front of him. You say, Hey Rick, I'm Big King Darkman. How do I banish demons? Hmm? Oh, uh, Lord Darkman, how are you? I'm good, good. How do I banish demons? What? You say, I've been looking through my spellbook and there's nothing about banishing demons. I want to know how to do that. Ah, yes. Well, I think you could, should I think you should seek out the land of Kishok. Kishok? Isn't that the land of demons? I was told to go to Ar Arat. Arat? That's where they told me to go. Oh, that's just the name of the country. You say, Okay, but that's the place where the demons live. Well, yes. I want to go where the demons are. You want to go to a rat? Yes. Why? You say, I mean, I guess I'm going there to learn how to banish demons. Why? I'm the one that's going to have to do the job. You're going to have to do what? Banish demons. Ah, oh, yes, I see. You say, Rick, you're not very helpful. I will go to a rot, but before I do, I'm demoting you. I can do that as Big King. What? But I thought... I'm the only one that can banish demons. You're not helpful enough to help me. You're too busy playing with your maps and schematics. You demote Rick to peasant. You're demoted to peasant, Rick. You're not even worthy to wipe my feet anymore. You teleport to the nearest guard. You arrive at the gates of Lord British's castle. A guard sees you and speaks up. Ah, oh, it's you again. I told you to never come here again. You say, sorry about that, but it's urgent. There's a peasant named Rick in the Great Hall. Please go arrest him. The guard shakes his head and mutters under his breath. Yeah, right. Like I'm falling for that again. He goes back to his conversation with another guard. You teleport to Rick. You arrive in the Great Hall. Rick is there talking to some peasants. They all look surprised and scared when they see you. You smite Rick. You raise your hand to strike Rick. But stop. Something doesn't feel right about this. Oh, Big King. I see you decide to take my advice after all. Lord British says. You say, Lord British, what are you doing here? Not important. I'm just here to collect you, Big King. I'm not going. Yes, you are. Remember, you have to banish a demon lord. You say, Okay, but can I smite Rick first? He's a peasant and he shouldn't be here. I told you, Rick isn't a peasant. He's a slave. You don't smite slaves. You pause. Wait, is that a new law? You say, Fine. Then, I, then as Big King, I proclaim slavery to be illegal. Go right ahead, Lord British says, not even looking up from his book. You grab Rick by the collar and pull him to the gate. The guard stops you. You say, I'm off to free this man. Please let us through. Can't let you through. Sorry. But he's a slave. Can't you see he's tied up? Yeah, we can see that. Come on, let's go. You say, I'll banish demons after I free Rick. Nice try, but as I said, you don't have the magic to do that. You look at Rick, now crying. Fine, but please don't hurt him. No promises. You say, don't have magic? You really think I don't have enough magic for that? Maybe, but it's not magic that's keeping him. It's your mind. My mind? How do you know? You're just a... You stop yourself. You can't even insult him. Never mind. Just have to ignore the fools who doubt my power. You turn Rick into a statue. Yeah, that'll stop him. <laughs> you grab Rick and raise your hand to cast a spell. Instead of casting, you g grab Rick's face and kiss him goodbye. Then you drop him. <laughs> he falls to the ground and your spell turns him into a statue. He's frozen in place forever, and you're free. You turn to Lord British. 
<laughs> you say, Okay, I freed him so I could petrify him. Sorry that took so long. Don't be. It gave me a chance to look over the peasants. They're a pathetic lock, big king. Hm, I'm glad you see it my way. Thanks again, Lord British. You say, Anyway, want to go banish demons? Sure. Just have to get changed out of this robe. Oh, okay then. Lord British teleports back to his castle, and you teleport to Gloom. You go shopping in Gloom. You buy a lot of various weapons and armor. You may have to fight demons after all. When you go back to Gloom, you find a letter on your pillow. Hey. You read, you read letter. Hey. So yeah, I found out you can't enter hell because you suck at golf. I thought it was a myth, but apparently it's true. Wow, you really do suck. You tear the letter in half. You hate it when people tell the truth. After a few days, you receive a second letter. I lied. You throw the first letter in anger and start reading the new one. <laughs> well, I can't let you enter hell either, then. This is great. I'm finally able to leave this place forever. Is it possible to be more annoying than that? You write a response. Great, so you're leaving, then. Guess you won't miss me when I'm gone. Actually, I'm not leaving. Who the hell is this? And why is he leaving, anyway? You look up the sender. Your worst fears are confirmed when you see the sender. Rick! He goes on to tell you how he got his freedom after you turned him into a statue. Then he asks you why you didn't come find him. Who does this loser think he is? You could kill him right now, or you could play his little game. Trying to make a point, you write back. You send the letter via portal. You ask Frank what any of this could mean. You wake up in the hospital and Frank is there. You say, Frank, what am I doing here? Thought you might be up. You look better rested. Where are we? Someplace safe. I'm glad you're okay. What about Rick? Who? You say, Rick, the man I turned into a statue. Oh, him. Yeah, he's dead. What? You must have killed him in the middle of the night. Found, him is found his body near the statue you turned him into. <laughs> That's one way to put it. You say, Then what am I doing in the hospital? Oh, you must have had a heart attack or something. Slipped into a coma for a few days, then woke up. I've been taking care of you. You say, Thanks, Frank. Of course, kid. Frank notices you're wearing a wristband. Wow, you're not supposed to have any weapons. You were arrested and the wristband was put on you. You say, They arrested me after I had a heart attack? Man, fuck the police. You're lucky to be alive. I just didn't want some crazy ex-government like guy like you having a gun or something. Next time you might not be so lucky. You say, ex-government? Did they strip me of my title of big king as well? Huh? No, you were still the king. I think they just wanted to put you out of the way for a while. You don't think they'll come after me? I doubt it. No one's come for me. Why not? Because I'm a criminal, duh. But you've got the king on your side. Eh, and that's all it took. Look, they didn't want to exile me or anything, so I stayed. Why not? Because I had a lot of connections in the underworld, that's why. You're using the king as an ally to be in the underworld? You say, that's pretty rad, Frank. I'm glad you're also big king, even though you're a criminal. Well, it worked out, didn't it? Yeah, I guess. Here's the part where I stop to take a drink, because Jesus. <laughs> Frank's voice is harder than you would expect. There we go, that's better. <clears throat> you say, anyway, I'm gonna go find Lord British. No, sure, whatever you say. You wake up in the hospital again. This time you're in your old room you had at the palace. That makes sense, since you're here anyway. You find Lord British. You find Lord British talking to some gnome. Ah, oh, you're awake. Come now, I didn't expect you to just sit around in your state of coma. I have something to show you, something you need to see. I don't think that matters now, but what are you doing with that gnome? This is my son. 
you wave hello to Gnome Sun. Gnome Sun waves back. It's been years since I've seen my son, Lord British says to you. I'll get some clothes on and come with you then, you reply. You get dressed. You go into your wardrobe and pick out some clothes. You look in the mirror and decide you look like crap, so you pick out a different outfit. You find the perfect outfit. You find the perfect outfit in your wardrobe. Wow, you look like you've gained weight. Maybe you have. What should you do next? You return to Lord British. You return to Lord B British, who has just finished p petting Gnome Son on the head. <laughs> okay, what now? Come on, I'll explain on the way. You follow Lord British. You follow Lord British outside. He walks down a corridor and enters a room. As you may have noticed, I've been keeping myself busy in the last few years by becoming a father. You say, oh, that's nice. As I've gotten older, my job has gotten more stressful. The last thing I need is to neglect my new family. Ah, got it. You say, Hey, wait. You said last few years. How long was I in a coma? Oh, you were in a coma for two years, three months, and two days. You stare at Lord British in shock. You say, Well, that sucks. Is Rick dead at least? No, he's alive. Wait, how do you know that? I spoke to him the day before you woke up. You say, what the hell? What's Rick even doing? He said that he was in a coma for two years, three months, and two days. You say, so he went into a coma before I did and just woke up? What does he want? He didn't seem to know what he wanted. He just kept saying that he was in a coma for two years, three months, and two days. You say, where's Rick now? He's staying at the Zolan Empire Barracks. So that's where I need to go next. You teleport to Zalan Empire Barracks. You appear in the Zalan Empire Barracks, which looks almost exactly like how you remember it. This would be the part of your journey where you would say, at least things have remained the same. You search for Rick. You search for Rick and find him in the tavern, drinking heavily. You turn Rick's beer into snakes. As you place the beer on the table, the snakes begin to crawl out of the bottle and pour themselves into the glass. Rick watches this with awe before downing the glass of beer in one go. You say, Rick. Rick, how did you drink all of those snakes? Hell if I know. Must have been some magic concoction they had there. I found a couple of interesting things on my travels. One of those things being you, it seems. You say, Okay, Rick, I'm not messing around. What is your goal here? My what? Your goal. What do you want? I don't know what you're talking about. You say, Fine. You grab a bottle of wine from the table and drink it over Rick's head. He falls to the floor in a heap, grabbing at his broken skull. I should like to point out, I only entered the part where I say fine. The game just assumed the rest. Uh, you cast a spell to turn the wine into magma. As you, draw, as you draw your hand back, the bottle of wine turns into magma, and Rick screams in agony as it burns through his hair and scalds his flesh. <clears throat> you say, I don't know what you did to me last time, Rick, but this time, it's over. You grab a nearby crossbow off the wall and point it at Rick's head. Do you know what this is, Rick? What this symbol means? Rick slowly raises his hand, which holds a hank of bloody hair that's been pulled out by its roots. Jesus. You say, This crossbow is equipped with a rune that eats souls. I don't know why it's in a tavern, but it's very powerful. I don't know what you're talking about. You shoot Rick with a crossbow. You pull the trigger of the crossbow, and the bolt goes through Rick's head, killing him instantly. As blood trickles down his face, he gives a strange smile before dying. You sigh, 
relieved. Thank God. I was really getting sick of his presence. He was really run running me ragged, that little maggot. The bartender walks over to you. You say, sorry about that. I had to kill a peasant. No problem, lord. Was that the other one? Yeah. Now change the guard. You walk out of the barracks and on to the street. You say, everyone, Big King Darkman has returned. I am free from my coma, and I have killed Rick. The citizens of the city run and swarm you, clapping and celebrating. You're surprised by the volume of people. But as they get closer, you recognize them as the prostitutes, soldiers, and whores from the brothel. And, uh, that is the end of Big King Darkman. If I remember correctly, I did try to go on a little farther than that, but I, I didn't really... After this point, I thought the story started to get meandering. I don't remember what happened, but I copied up to this point because I figured this is the perfect ending. Big King escapes his coma, I guess makes peace with Frank, who he wanted to love but did not love him in return, so they went their separate ways as big kings. And at last, after turning him into a statue and trapping him in hell and re-killing him, I guess, he finally, once and for all, killed Rick. And the people who celebrated the big king Darkman were not other lords. Of course, it wasn't Lord British, he had his obligations to his gnome son. But it was the people. The people of wherever the heck we are. Are we still in gloom? Maybe? I do not remember. Wherever we are, it's the people of the kingdom that celebrate Big King Darkman. You know, e even the prostitutes, even the prostitutes of the brothel come out to celebrate Big King Darkman's return. Because he is a man for the people. Not not just the higher-ups. And you know, not even just the blue-collar workers. He won't forget the sex workers, either. Everybody is important to Big King Darkman. Except for Rick, who just kind of sucks. So yeah, that that is AI Dungeon. Uh... Obviously not quite as good as a live session. Maybe one of these days I'll uh, make an account and we'll do something proper in AI Dungeon, but um, I did want to show that off because A, I love the story of Big King Darkman, and I'm glad I get to share it with everybody, and B, I, I felt it was important to show off what AI Dungeon can do. I love when an actual AI is actually able to create stuff, and it's not just, you know, somebody writing a weird thing and going, Oh, an AI made this! Actual machine learning is bizarre, clunky, and fascinating. And it is always cool to see what it gets consistent, what it gets right, and what it gets wrong. Consistency is a different category, because sometimes consistent can mean right or wrong, or right for a while until it stops being right. Wrong, usually it doesn't broken clock everything. <laughs> when it gets it wrong, it gets it wrong forever. <laughs> but yeah, I think AI Dungeon is cool, and I want to get it in a better light, because Mario throwing a dagger at a bandit's chest was okay, but it didn't quite capture the majesty of AI Dungeon, so yeah, uh, I guess if you want more of that, uh, you can go and uh, register it for AI Dungeon yourself, if you can see that being a thing you are fascinated by. Or I guess if you don't want to do that, uh, just go check out Wayne Radio TV. He, he did a bunch of those, and they were all good. <laughs> Damn it, they were all good. <laughs> You're better than mine. Heck. Actually, you know what? No. I'm not going to put down the story of Big King Darkman. He may be bad at golf, but he is good at heart, I guess, despite his capacity for murder. But, uh, yeah, that's Mario vs. Donkey Kong finished. 
Hmm, do I want to reveal uh, what's going to be next week? Hmm. Uh, hmm. You know what? I think I will say what it is, because I can't wait to play it. I've been wanting to play it for myself for a little while now. Oop. Had to uh, clear my throat there, sorry. But uh, yeah, I've actually been wanting to uh, play it for a little while now. Uh, let's see, can I s find when that initially came out? Uh, September 25th, 2020 is the date I'm being given on Steam, but yeah. Scarlet Hollow, it is a horror game, a horror visual novel by Abby Howard, who is an artist I like. I think she is pretty good. Uh, but more on her later. Uh, I have seen episode one of Scarlet Hollow. Uh, it is actually going to be a adventure game with multiple chapters. It looks pretty cool, and, you know, again, I will explain in more detail next week. For the time, though, i uh, look forward to Scarlet Hollow. I'll see you for that next Thursday. And I'll see you next Tuesday for Hades. Next week on streams is just going to be a whole lot of new stuff. By which I mean two things. Which is sort of a whole lot of stuff, right? But, uh, yeah. Mario vs. Donkey Kong was sort of fun sometimes. And Big King Darkman. Good, good guy. Good guy. <laughs>